Hello guys, it's Andrei. Welcome to this video entitled Why are Estonians so blonde and blue-eyed? This is a video is going to touch many topics that are very interesting to me and uh, let's get into it. So Estonia is the most blonde and blue-eyed country in the world and I link some uh, statistics from an anthropologist, Karen Mark. In his study, 66% of Estonians, and this is the number of uh, subjects that were used for this statistic, have blue or gray eyes. They are beat only by Finns at 69.4%. Uh, for comparison, Russians have blue or gray eyes at a frequency of 45.1% and Hungarians 34.2%. So it's a big difference. Uh, is in case of the Estonians, it's two thirds who have eye color that is blue or gray, which doesn't even include green or like uh, a mixture of blue and green or a mixture of blue and yellow. So Estonians are very light. When it comes to eye color, Estonians are the second lightest ethnicity in the world, as per this statistic. But when it comes to hair color, Estonians are the lightest ethnicity in the world, with a blondism rate of 36.5%. We need to keep in mind that in Carrick's Karen Mark's definition of blonde hair, only super light blood platinum blonde hair, like the one in this picture, was included. If we extend the definition of blonde hair to include what Americans consider as blonde, then almost every native Estonian is blonde. Uh, let's go on to the some of the genotypes and SNPs that have to do with pigmentation. Uh, this SNP is within the HERC2 gene. It's located on the 15th chromosome and it is the most predictive SNP in relation to eye color. 23andMe uses it for eye color prediction. And here we see a big difference between Estonians and who have uh, the highest frequency of the derived allele out of all, all world populations. So if you look at this SNP in particular, Estonians have the highest frequency of the light alleles. And you see 84% uh, of Estonians have GG compared to 59.3% of English and compared to uh, even a, a pretty big uh, percentage to uh, three, three quarters of Northern Swedes, but it's still lower than Estonians. Northern Swedes are still darker than Estonians, if you look at this particular SNP. Uh, here's the source, and let's go into some different SNPs, different genes. Uh, this is an SNP within the OCA2 gene, also on the 15th chromosome. So OCA2 and HERC2, they come together. Uh, they're very close together. HERC2 comes just after OCA2, but they're both on the 15th chromosome, and they kind of influence one another. Uh, this SNP is also related to eye color, and here you see there is not such a big difference, but it's still Estonians are still uh, the lightest ethnicity out of these, out of uh, Northern Swedes and English. Much of the variation in Estonian color, eye color, from hazel to gray, is due to variation in HERC2, OCA2, and TIRP1 genes. When considering just the light-eyed individuals, we can assume Estonians have a higher rate of gray eyes relative to green and hazel than Northern Swedes or Anglos. And once again here we see Estonians have the highest frequency of the derived allele out of all world populations. Uh, this is a TIRP1. It's a gene on the ninth chromosome and it's a very interesting gene because it's implicated not only in the pigmentation of Europeans, but it's also responsible for the blonde hair in uh, Melanesians. However, the blonde hair in Melanesians is a different it's a different SNP on this gene. So it's not this SNP. But if you look at this SNP, you see that Estonians once again have the highest frequency of the derived allele out of all world populations, followed by Northern Swedes, followed by Anglos. And then for comparison, you look at non-European ethnicities, there is no there is pretty much no uh, derived alleles here, no, no, no derived genotypes here, very rare. But for Estonians, it is 52.6% who have CC genotype and only 7.5% who have TT compared to 93.9% uh, of Japanese who have TT. Just interesting thing to think about. Uh, who did Estonians get this pigmentation from? People who don't really understand genetics have been suggesting that Estonians got their light features from WHG, which are Western hunter-gatherers, or ancient North Eurasians, or Eastern hunter-gatherers, or any other ancestral groups. All of these theories are equally wrong. And for example, WHG, Western hunter-gatherers, were much darker than Estonians, while Eastern hunter-gatherers and ancient North Eurasians were much darker than even the darkest of modern Europeans. The ancestors of Estonians started getting lighter only in the Bronze Age, and this lightening has continued on from there. So here I link a little study. Uh, this study features a lot of things, but it also features 
the HI Resplex predictions for eye color and hair color and skin color for multiple groups that are native to Estonians. So the first number here, it is the number of samples. Uh, so here we have three Western Russian hunter-gatherers, which are also known as Eastern hunter-gatherers, and 100% of them had brown eyes, 100% of them black hair, you know, very dark people. So look at the picture on the right. Uh, this is the EHG, BHG guy. It's a Tajik guy, but I think he represents this phenotype pretty well. This would be what the Eastern hunter-gatherers look like. Uh, now, five people, uh, five samples, Latvian hunter-gatherers, Baltic hunter-gatherers, 40% brown eyes, 20% blonde hair, and 80% dark brown and black hair. So they were maybe a little bit lighter, but still not really like Estonians whatsoever. Uh, and then seven samples, Estonian corded wear. So you see corded Estonian on the right, where I'm pointing my... Yeah, this guy right here in the, in the hat. So 71% brown eyes, 14% brown hair, and 86% uh, dark brown and black hair. So once again, very dark people compared to Estonians. They are in pigmentation on par, I would say, with maybe Greeks or Spaniards. Pretty dark people, these corded wear people. And then suddenly you see this big uh, difference. 10 Estonian late Bronze Age samples, 30% of them had brown eyes, only 30% from 71 in uh, early Bronze Age, or not even early, middle Bronze Age, to 30 in late Bronze Age. That's, a, such, a, that's such a big jump, right? And then you have 10% blonde hair. Where did that come from? And then you have 30% brown hair, but still kind of dark haired as a whole. Still darker than Estonians of today. And here we go to the Estonian Iron Age. 0% brown eyes, 78% blonde hair, and then some brown hair, some dark brown hair. So this is already like a modern Estonian. By the Iron Age, it was already pretty much a modern day Estonian with no brown eyes and with uh, mostly blonde hair. And then Estonian Middle Age, same thing pretty much. So from this, we can see a clear pattern of Estonians getting lighter and lighter over time. So you get you go from this individual on the right, let me zoom in. From this individual, very swarthy individual, Eastern Hunter Gatherer, you go to a quartered individual, a little bit lighter, but still pretty swarthy. Then you go into late Bronze Age individual, which is kind of like very light. And then you go into modern Estonian, which is like super light. And that's how this evolution has been happening. All right. So the major question you might be asking yourself is why did they get so light? Why did that happen? A lot of people blame the environment for this depigmentation. De uh, the environment is low altitude of the sun, dark winters, but I don't believe that any environmental condition could lead to such extreme depigmentation so quickly. The environmental condition could explain the light pigmentation alleles that were sparsely present in Estonian ancestors, such as derived HERC2 in WHG, derived KETOG in a &E, uh, derived SLC 45A2 in uh, farmers, but they did not contribute in any way, in any major way, to the depigmentation of modern Estonians in the Bronze Age, right? So when we talk about the depigmentation, that really happened in the Bronze Age. You see this, this move from corded to late Bronze Age to modern Estonian, that all happened in the Bronze Age. Like by the Iron Age, it's already modern Estonian. So all that depigmentation happened very quickly. So it seems that together with the arrival of Indo-Europeans, which is what we recorded where, uh, also arrived some cultural customs and perhaps beauty standards that were really the driving factor behind this depigmentation. You can observe these beauty standards today in our stereotypes, and not just in stereotypes of Europeans, but every people of Indo-European descent. Yes, even in the Indian and Iranian society, pale features are idealized. It is because of these beauty standards that Estonians became so depigmented under Indo-Europeans. And once Uralix arrived in the Iron Age, the pigmentation has already been completed. Think of even the Indo-European words for light color. I will present an example in my own language, Russian. Svetli, which means a light-colored man. Svetoi means uh, a male saint. Svetle, which means a light-colored woman. Svetaya means a female saint. So leave a comment what you think, a uh, suggestion for what I should do next. I will link this uh, study in the description, of course, so that you can read it on your own. And um, thank you. Subscribe, like my video. Goodbye.